All right, so for that first one, when you divide, you're going to get 4m, so that's 4m squared plus 20m. Subtract, leaves you with 8m, bring down the 37. 8m divided by m is 8. Multiply 8m plus 40. Subtract, you get negative 3. You cannot divide negative 3 by m, so that means negative 3 is your remainder. Here's how you write it. Since it's negative, you're going to do minus 3 over the divisor. This is your answer right here. Okay? That's why I went through that explanation with the 20 over 8. Okay? <coughs> um, because, here's why, um, this is the reason why we write it like this. If we were to try and combine these, okay, we would need a common denominator, correct? To do 4 n plus 8 minus 3 over 10 plus 5. Okay? If we multiply 4 n plus 8 by m plus 5 and then subtract 3, guess what? We're going to get 4 m squared plus 28 m plus 37. Um, yes, remainder over the device. Okay, remainder over the device. Now, this second example, and I think most of you started on it, um, the dividend is not in standard form. It must be in standard form before you start dividing. Okay, so 6k plus 6, that part's okay. The other one, though, we've got to fix that 24k squared plus 18k minus 4. We do need to fix that. So 24 divided by 6 is 4. k squared over k is k. So multiply 4k times 6k is 24k squared. 4k times 6 is plus 24k. Subtract. 18 minus 24 is negative 6k. Bring down the 4. Negative 6k divided by positive 6k is a negative 1. So when we multiply, we get negative 6k minus 6. Subtract negative 4 minus a negative 6. That's like adding 6. So that is positive 2. So we add 2 over 6k plus 6. Now, if you see this um, on an answer key, notice that... 2, 6, and 6 all have a factor of 2. So on an answer key, it would probably be rewritten as 1 over 3k plus 3. They're going to divide all those terms by 2. It's the same thing. Okay, They just reduced it. Do you have a denominator that can factor a few factors? Is it impossible? Well, yeah, like this one, you could have divided everything by 2. Yeah. Everything had a factor of 2 in it, yeah. Um, but you would have still ended up with the same answer. Like yeah, yeah, I'm okay with that. I would rather you leave it as 2 over 6k plus 6 okay. than incorrectly simplify it and like just do the first 2 over 6 or something like that. Um, I would rather you leave it than, than incorrectly do it. It doesn't come up very often, uh, but I think both the problems, two of the problems on the, the worksheet, um, you end up with something like, uh, let me just make something up here, um, 3x plus 1. This isn't going to come out even or nice at all, but um, if you were to have to do long division on this, okay? 7 is not evenly divisible by 3. So you can have fractions in this. Okay? You would write that as 7 over 3x. Okay? Just use your calculator to do some fractions here. When you multiply, that is 7x squared. And then you would have plus 7 thirds x. Just use your calculator to crunch the numbers. Okay? Um, so or actually, let's do a little, little fractions lesson right here. Uh, 5, if we express that as over 3, that would be 15 over 3. So we have negative 15 over 3 minus 7, so negative 22 over 3x. And when we divide that by 3, 
22 over 3 divided by 3. What do we do when we have a fraction divided by a fraction? Flip and multiply. So that would be 22 over 9. Your calculator will do it too. Just showing you how to do it by hand. So 1 would be 9 over 9. And that would give you 9 plus 22 is 31 over 9. Would be your remainder. Okay, so that's just a forethought. Um, all the ones that I'm getting ready to ask you to do, divide evenly. Okay, but when we get back to the worksheets, there will be there are a couple that do not. So I just wanted to throw that out there. This is the last discontinuity that we need to worry about. Slant asymptotes occur when the top degree is exactly one degree greater than the bottom degree. So if you do not have a horizontal asymptote, you are a candidate for a slant asymptote, but only if the top is one degree greater. Um, so to determine what the slant asymptote is, you're going to use long division. You're going to divide the numerator by the denominator using long division. The good news is you don't have to worry about the remainder. Okay? You don't have to worry about the remainder with the slant asymptotes. So let's go through this example right here and identify everything. Now obviously we do not have a horizontal asymptote because I just said we're going to do slant asymptotes. If you have a slant, you do not have a horizontal. Okay? The degree is greater than the denominator, so no horizontal asymptote. It is one degree greater, so it's going to be a slant asymptote, but I'm going to save that for the end. Do you need to factor? Hmm? Do you need to factor? Yes, you should still factor because we're still going through the list of the other stuff. So the top is x times x minus 1. Well, here's another case where it's so close to canceling, but it's but it doesn't. So we don't have any holes. And I'm combining the word hole and none for none. pun. Um, no holes. Vertical asymptote. Where do we have a vertical asymptote? Perfect. x equals negative 1. Set the denominator equal to 0 and solve. It is at negative 1, so we've got those checked off. We said that we do have a slant asymptote, so let's find it. Divide the numerator by the denominator. This time we're missing the constant term. We're missing the 0 on the end. x squared divided by x is x. Multiply, we get x squared plus x. Subtract negative x minus x. Be careful with this, okay? Negative 1 minus 1 is actually negative 2. <clears throat> negative 2x divided by x, so minus 2. Really, we're done at this point. You really don't even have to finish out the process. It can't hurt just to be in the habit of it. But all we need is the quotient. The slant asymptote is y equals x minus 2. It is a line. It is the equation of a line. Now let me show you how you can check this. Okay? It's not absolutely foolproof, but it, it does kind of help. Uh, graph your function. Okay? And in y2, graph your slant asymptote. Put in your, y, your slant asymptote. X minus 2. Okay, when you look at it, that slant asymptote should fit right, in, it's, it's going to just fit right inside those two curves, okay? If we had miscalculated that, say for example, we accidentally we messed up our sign and we had a positive 2x, or maybe, maybe what if we had said that negative x minus x was 0, so all we got was x. So say we said that the slant asymptote was just x when we graph it, and we graph x, you can, your slant asymptote should never cut through the rational function. Okay, see the difference there? Um, it's not foolproof, but it is one way to check and make sure that you didn't make like some major error. Okay? <clears throat> All right.
Let's look at two more examples and then you'll be able to finish out your worksheets. X squared minus X minus 2 over X minus 1. Okay, obviously no horizontal asymptote. The numerator is greater than the denominator. Factor X minus 2 times X plus 1. Again, it is so close to canceling, but it does not. This is why your factoring is very important to be accurate. If you had flipped your signs, then you would say that there was a hole, but there's not. There is a vertical asymptote, however, at x equals positive 1 this time. And let's do the slant asymptote. x squared divided by x is x. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. Again, be very careful. Negative 1 minus negative 1. This time it is 0. Correct? Negative 1 minus negative 1. Subtracting negative, same as adding positive. So negative 1 plus 1 is 0. 0x zero divided by x is, is 0. So our slant asymptote in this case is y equals x. That is possible. Okay? That can be your slant asymptote. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a little, a little wary of that. It seems a little weird, so I'm going to graph it to check. So well, we're good. That hits. Okay, that works perfectly. We're good. Y equals X is the slant asymptote. Okay, notice I didn't even finish out the long division there because I didn't have to. Okay, I was done. I wasn't going to be able to divide anything else, so I just stopped. Okay, last one. Now, how can we factor the numerator? Grouping. No horizontal asymptote. I'm getting away from my order here. Grouping, yes. The first one has a GCF of x squared. So we are left with 2x plus 5. What do we need to take out of the second pair? Negative 4. That leaves us with 2x plus 5. What? Oh, I changed it. I'm sorry. I changed it so it would actually work. Fix your, fix your paper. I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. My bad. Change your paper to this problem because I realized that it did, I, I had to fix it so it would work. The way you I, to, I changed it so it would actually work. <laughs> I need to fix that before I make copies of this again. Okay. <laughs> Do that every year. Okay, yes, fix it. Fix it. Change the 13 to an 8 and the 30 to a 20. Okay, so let's keep going. Group your GCFs together. Common factor. Now, technically, yes, the denominator does factor, but guess what? It, it has this whole thing in common. So our whole. We actually have holes, plural, we have two of them, because x squared minus 4, when we set that equal to 0, you can factor it or you can solve by taking square roots. Factoring, it's less likely that you're going to forget both of them, because there are two. When you take the square root of 4, you need the positive and the negative. Now, don't forget, with holes, we want their y value. So the simplified version of this is 2x plus 5. So we need to plug in both positive 2 and negative 2 into uh, the simplified version. So 2 times positive 2 plus 5, that is 9. So we have one whole at 2, 9. And... We have another hole at negative 2, positive 1. 